Hello, my name is Martin and this is 3D Printing Iceland. In this video I'm going to assemble Banner Hunt's spool system. I want to store my Nylon X filament from Matter Hackers in a dry box and decided to go with this box because I can use the filament inside the box through a bowden tube. So it's a good solution I think for uh, both storing and, and using a filament that is sensitive to moisture. So let's have a look after the intro. So my initial thoughts on storing the nylon X was to have a Ziploc bag that I could put a lot of desiccant inside of and use it that way. But as I have those wonderful cats here in the house, they tend to tear up everything. And this is the original packaging bag that was vacuum sealed when I got the filament uh, maybe one month ago. And they have uh, made holes in the back so the air has got inside so I have to hide it away from the cats but saw the spanner hunt spool system and thought that might be a more permanent solution for me so I decided to to print out the casings and the most of the printed parts there are several fasteners and items that I needed to get to finish the build and I decided to order those parts from spanner hands directly and there were two items on their inventory one where the the flexible seal that goes in between the plastic parts and also the the part that closes up the box it's a semi flexible filament and and they provide you the the files to print them yourself but you have to have like a semi flex material to do this part and a more flexible material to do the seal so I didn't have those materials, so I decided to get those parts directly from Spider Hands printed and, and ready in the correct materials. The rest of the items are the fasteners and coupler to you put the bottom tube into the coupler and direct that to the printer and you screw this in. There's also a bearing. This is just normal bearings that I could source easily, but there are some parts like this one. I'm not sure if I could source them locally and, and those nylon nuts here and, and those correct screws. Uh, this just was much simpler to get those parts as a one item from spanner hands. So I also got the sealant glue for the clear windows and those are acrylic clear windows so I got those items in the mail and uh, did an unboxing video of that yesterday in this video I'm gonna install all this together and, and create the system I already printed out the main bodies of the system they are printed in uh, 0.3 millimeter layer height I wasn't going for print quality or, or or anything like that with those prints it's just a uh, basic shell and uh, used normal PLA settings in the slicer for Prusa filament also printed out the hinges parts that go with the flexible part and those are printed with four parameters to give them extra strength and then there are this item that bowden tube coupler goes into and that's also four parameters then there's this uh, those two items that go at the end of the ball bearings for the, the spool holders and the bearing goes in between and this is end caps of the bearings so those are just normal PLA parts printed at 0.3 millimeters and two parameters so there's it's not a strength issue with those those two, three parts so they're fairly basic so all those printed parts can be printed out using files from Spanner Hands Thinkiverse page and I'll link to the page in the video description. There are several versions of the spools. Um, those I printed was version 4 and they have the windows uh, several changes from previous versions but if you have a smaller build volume you might want to go for the files that uh, split the model into four pieces so it's top and bottom is, is split in half but those are the, the printed parts and you also get the STL files for the gasket on this part but I got them directly from Spanner Hands. So to assemble these parts you basically need a 2.5 millimeter hex key or a tool like this. It's very nice to have a tool like this instead of using an Allen key. 2.5 millimeters are the ones that goes into the screws and then you need some tool maybe like this or or like this to hold the nylon nuts when you're tightening the screws so uh, it's basically only those tools that you really need so the first thing I'm going to do is, is fasten the hinges on the 
bottom part and on the top part and they just screw in with the screws and, and nuts. One thing to note, there are two lengths of screws and the longer ones have to go at the top because the enclosure is a little bit thicker at the top, so they have to go at the top. One thing to note, those nylon nuts, you have to be careful not to rip out the threads, they're not super strong, so you just have to tighten them up a little bit and not too much. So the next thing is to place the, the part that where the filament comes out and you can rotate this in any way that you seem fit depending on your setup. In my case I'm just going to have it in the standard position uh, like so. so this part goes in from the un underneath like so. So I'm just going to store the screws in the part. If I want to print out an in-plate at a later time, I can just screw those screws out and print the in-plate. But this way I'm just storing the screws and filling up the holes so they're airtight. So now the, all the screws are in and all the parts and I'm gonna put the bonnet tube coupler in here and put the lid on using those fasteners that go between those holes at the back. put in the, the bottom tube coupler that screws in here. Now the bottom tube coupler is in and now I have to glue in acrylic windows from the inside. Just remember to remove the plastic before you apply the glue. And I 
I think for one window I used like one tenth maybe of the amount in the syringe. And it's a good idea to have a piece of paper towel. There was a little bit too much. So from outside it's uh, okay. But as you can see from the inside, this small amount of glue was totally covering the slot where the acrylic plastic was sitting on. Just need a very tiny amount of this glue to get this fixed. Now the second window is in place. So now for the spool core, you place the bearings inside the core. You maybe have to trim this a little bit. So if you have done a lot of fidget spinners, you know this process. <laughs> then those plastic parts go inside the bearings. It goes like this. Even though the, the plastic parts can rotate to a certain amount inside the case, when you close it down, might get stiffer so a good design to have the bearings inside to make sure this can rotate freely so now I'm gonna insert the casket and I was thinking about using the glue to seal it in place I'm not sure if that is needed as I have so much glue left I'm gonna put a small amount of glue underneath the casket Now the casket is in place. I made a mistake. Now I, pr I pressed the, against the clear window and it, I pushed it in. I guess you have to be careful when you're still gluing. <laughs> uh, this has some curing time, I guess. Just be careful with that. Now this part goes over the top, hints, and, and clamps underneath the second one. Here's the finished box. It was really easy to assemble with all the parts sourced from spanner hands. And I didn't have to measure out or figure out what parts to get. It was just a simple, simple order on their website. So now I'm just going to let the glue cure. As a, the bag has been punctured by my cats and it's been sitting in the living room for quite some time. So I have to dry this out in the oven and I have to read about temperature and time, time length. I'm not sure what temperatures is best to dry it out. I, I think 50 degrees C, but I'm not exactly sure. So I have to read out about that. And when that is ready, I'll put it in this box and got a two meter long powder tube and um, that goes in here and I'm not sure where exactly I'm gonna place this but I might just use the entire length of the bowden tube in the beginning and at some time shorten it if I find it necessary. So this was my video on the spanner hand spool system. Uh, it was a very simple installation to screw everything together and I would highly recommend that you would buy those flexible parts and the fasteners and the clear windows and the coupler directly from spanner hands so you get the correct parts if you, if you can't source them locally. It depends on uh, where you're at. Like it would be crazy expensive for me to get a piece of acrylic and cut down to use only a small window because I normally don't work with acrylics. So I would probably have to buy a big sheet and have it laying around in the garage for months and used. So it was just simpler to get it there. But this was a fun and easy build and I hope you enjoyed the process. And for now, I thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.